wrong repair. Robert Quick's car came to a stop in the inside of the racetrack, in the exit of turn number two. And of course, the AMR Indy car safety team is tending to him now. Then you can see Ryan Hunter Ray's car just before the entrance of turn number three. It sits in the middle lane here of this facility. James Hinchcliffe is some 25 yards in front of where Robert Wiggins is getting medical attention. So we hope for the best. They are cleaning now all of the debris and the parts of the car, part of that Lucas Oil machine. And Robert Wiggins still sits on the racetrack towards the bottom of the racetrack as they go around, go around picking up the different carbon fibers and the tritons that is collected as a result of this incident. And as we speak, Andrew Crow, we're getting a look at the replay now. We see uh, the right on the right wing is to one side by side. Yeah, and it's, it's oh, so worse than the circumstances. You can imagine what oh, that impact for Robert Wiggins is. Absolutely horrific. And it all starts with him being just, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <sighs> yeah, we just, fingers crossed for, for Robert Wiggins uh, in, in this situation. I mean, it was. Side by side, uh, again, not sure if Ryan Hunter Ray knew that Robert Wickens was on the inside of him, uh, but Robert Wickens really with nowhere to go, turning into the corner. Uh, Ryan Hunter Ray spinning around and just launching Robert Wickens up into the fence. And uh, oh, that is, if Wickens, as the car got airborne, it started to spin, and then uh, it rotated between the, nose, the front nose of the car and the rear wing of the car, it took turns getting caught up in the catch fence. And again, did his job to keep that car from leaving the racetrack and plug it, plug it eventually back to the racetrack and put the inside. And, and really, the only other sort of similar impact I can compare to is the crash of Kenny Brunk in the Texas Motor Speedway where he got into the fence and started rotating the car so, so violently. And uh, obviously, we know over the course of the, the last you know two decades, IndyCar has done a tremendous job with all their technical partners at advancing the safety in every department. Uh, you know, in, in the case of the East End, we see now actually Robert Wickens being extricated from the car. Uh, we see him with some sort of the device on his neck to stabilize that. So that is the, the biggest area of concern here. Again, don't want to speculate anything, but uh, uh, certainly see him slowly but surely being extricated from the car. Yeah, and uh, we saw members of the safety group uh, going along, uh, what was interesting to know there, they were going along the separation between the old retaining wall and the safer area. That fell down in there, they were pulling pieces of debris out, especially at the point of impact of the bit was the most heavily damaged. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, it, it, we, know, we know it's going to be a, uh, a long repair here, but uh, at the same time, the only thing we really care about at this point is, is, is Rob Wickens out there now putting him onto, onto a stretcher. And uh, again, fingers crossed. And uh, we uh, are in a red flag, black condition, and as we said, uh, it, 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 it's going to be a lengthy one. So much so that they have uh, told the drivers that they can step out of their vehicles and uh, all of them got together collectively and of course uh, talking a bit about the start of this race, uh, I'm sure as we're under this red flag and it's 8 of 200 class. Michael Young, you said you just managed to hear some radio traffic uh, very early on and then it's... As soon as they made contact with the wall, Robert Wiggins, Peter Schillis, Ray Stratton just got ready to say, are you okay? Are you okay, Robert? Let us know if you're okay. He said, just hit your button, and just so we can hear radio chatter if you're okay. Obviously, the situation Robert was unable to do so. But I said, as you said, we're getting a good sign. We see him being extricated from the car to get the name Mark Kitty Car Safety Team. It's the best in the business, and nobody else is going to have out there. So, but all that situation like that is very, very easy with all the forces that play in. Your arms are, are flying about the cockpit. It's very easy for the, the, the simply the radio report to get disconnected. So it could very well be that he didn't even hear, you know, that all the electronics certainly is such a meeting and such an impact. You wouldn't be surprised if the, the radio was simply destroyed or just disconnected in this situation. But uh, uh, now uh, being transported in, into the ambulance on, on the stretcher and uh, more than likely uh, straight to the infield uh, care center here. So, I um, think we can tell you Robert uh, Wiggins, Ryan Hunter Ray, James Hinslip, Drew Masato, and Pietro Fittipaldi, all involved in that incident. We should go back and revisit what happened on the opening lap. Spencer Pickett's car, Lon Pedro, and that crew continues uh, in their efforts. It started before this incident. Uh, Spencer Pickett is yet to turn a lap because that started with the Grand Prix. Before we ever got to the 
a free plug. Well, I, I, frankly enough, with all the cars that are out of the race, it, it's only going to take an additional four laps here for Spencer Pagan for him to make his way uh, from, from 22nd all the way up to 16th. So, I mean, uh, that, that is why it's so crucial in these laps. I mean, had they taken that car back to the paddock, it would have been all over. And uh, uh, But, yeah, they, they've been working on it ever since. And, yeah, all he needs to do now is another four laps to gain some more points. Then road day first. Here with Scott Dixon as uh, all the drivers have climbed out of the machines now, keeping a close eye on the big screens here and, and uh, listening certainly to the uh, Eager radio broadcast. What did you see, Scott? Uh, it was just, you know, chaos. I think uh, obviously when, when the start, you know, the, the first stop was horrible. I don't know who, uh, who caused that chain reaction. It went so late. Um, whoever that was should have got a penalty for that, uh, which caused a pile up in the back. She should have probably caused a few more. Uh, and then, you know, just with that restart there, I don't know, maybe trying to go two, three wide too wide at least for the king bit. Uh, it's real bumpy this year. We've got a lot less downforce in the car. Uh, and we've got that touch and of course a bit of a chain reaction. But uh, yeah, first and foremost, just hope uh, everybody's okay. Um, obviously a, a big hit there for, for a lot of people. How much of, of all that? Obviously very little track time here this weekend. Uh, roll the dice a little bit to, to see what kind of setup you need. Uh, very strange circumstances heading into a sort of a 500 mile like this one. Yeah, when you look at it, maybe 40 minutes of practice before you go into a 500 mile race, and you know, uh, dress, you know, cars are pretty, uh, pretty different from what we had here last year. So, you know, in hindsight, I think it was a few of us that wanted to add practice time, but uh, it's what it is, you know. And, and maybe uh, for the drivers, you know, starting a 500 mile race, you know, uh, you know, you got a long ways, and you should maybe give a little more room. But you know, it's easier said than done. We just, you know, we want to drive fast when we get to the front and, and try and pick up a, a spot whenever we can. And um, you know, hate to see this, and, and uh, again, just hope everybody's okay. Scott Davis down here, guys. Michael Young. With Grant Rahal, Grant said he did not see anything, but obviously you had your own situation going on at the opening lap of this race. Tell us about your incident and what happened. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, all that really matters right now is, you know, those guys are okay. Um, you know, this is uh, when you race on a, on, a, on a very fast speedway like this, and the risk that we that we take, um, you know, but uh, clearly you hate to, to see to see what we just saw. I haven't seen a replay, obviously I saw the carnage and it's, it's a, you know, I've raced with Robbie for, well obviously a little, little split there, but I mean I raced with him in go-karts since we were 10 years old, so, well the man, I, I, I obviously always okay, same with Hinch and Ryan and Takutaku and uh, everybody that was involved, but uh, yeah, I mean on my deal, you know, everybody went on the start and then, uh, you know, just checked up, um, I've already talked to all the rest of the drivers, they all agree, it stems from the front row. Unfortunately, we've seen this um, before, and uh, at Amy, when, when Will was leading, it's disappointing. Um, you know, everybody was on it, and as was I, in the very back, and just couldn't see anything, and I had nowhere to go. So, unfortunately, not only did we, uh, we had a little damage here, but we got a penalty as well, which is uh, massively disappointing. But look, it's, uh, we're locked down. It's a long race to go. And again, it doesn't matter right now. Um, what matters is, is, uh, is Robbie and uh, all those guys. Uh, the fence, you know, it's pretty, pretty ugly back there, so I didn't see it, I don't really want to see it. Thank you for your time, best of luck for the rest of the day. Great, great. Let's go to Ryan Marie, Ryan? Yes, we're standing with Ryan and Ray, just to walk down to the care center. First of all, we're glad to see you're okay. From your perspective, what took place? Uh, like I said, to uh, NBC, you know, I'm just thinking about Ryan right now, just ask what the update was. And they're waiting for him to come back here, I guess, to get back to the infield medical care center, being able to this case. But, uh, yeah, I'm just think about his well being right now. Uh, yeah, as for the incident itself, came out to turn one, Robert had a run, popped to my inside. I stayed in the draft the power in front. He was out in clean air, and so he went backwards as we got to turn two. I pulled along forward, and he was at my left retired best, so um, there's no reason that um, I would think about giving up the corner at that time. So what I did was I just, I, I gave him the bottom. I, I ran a bit wide, left uh, three quarters of the lane, the lane down there, just for some margin of error, and then, um, yeah, I don't know, I'm just got hit behind the next thing in the wall, so uh, not here or there at this point. I'm thinking about, you know, Whitney's uh, well-being, so hope he's, uh, hope he's all right. Are you feeling okay? Yep, I'm fine. All right, thank you for the time. That's Ryan and Ray. Uh, anything different than what you've seen on the replays based upon his description? Well, uh, I mean, I, I certainly can see, and it's kind of exactly what we talked about before the start of the race, that uh, because of those bumps, the turn two okay. really is, is a one through. Uh, I'm in 212. Well, I'm actually a couple of sections you know, by 212.
Uh, uh, turn, I'm actually by a turn, one of those things where like the, the pit, pit, pit and it exit. Really, uh, didn't look like there was much, uh, you know, yeah. from either side. On, on Sorry, I'm, re I'm recording something right now, so I can't really which talk. Is, which is unfortunate, so I, but I can definitely <laughs> turn in at some point, and uh, Robert probably uh, yep. not having done any racing around here probably yep. anticipated that he would go really easily uh, too, too wide around there. So, so uh, I'm going to uh, go yeah, and continue recording. Just a big shame, but again, to run on a race point. Uh, Later. Uh,